we are going to treat some concepts in this lesson quickly. Don't worry if things get a little advanced. Keep watching the lessons after this and it will all be clear with time. Now, we are dealing with modules. You often hear about modal part. The modal part is a concept introduced with the Java platform model system, JPMS, in Java 9. It's an alternative to the class part, which was the traditional way of organizing and loading Java libraries and dependencies before Java 9. The modal part is a list of directories or jar files that contain Java modules. We are using an IDE, IntelliJ, so we hardly need to use the module path command in the command line. When you compile or run the Java application in the terminal, you will specify the module path using the dash dash module path or dash p for short. You will follow this by a list of directories or Java files separated by the system path separator. Since we are using an IDE, it manages all this based on your project settings and dependencies. So we don't need to set the modular paths manually. For example, to compile a modular Java application, you will use a command like this. The Javac is the Java compiler command line tool and it is used for compiling Java source code files into Java bytecode. Now the model path mods tells the compiler where to find the required models. In this example, mods is the directory containing the compiled Java models. The directory serves as the model path for the Java compiler. The dash d modes slash com dot example dot app specifies the output directory where the compiled Java bytecode files will be placed. In this example, the output directory is modes slash com dot example dot app. The Java compiler will create this directory if it does not exist and put the compiled class files and the module info.class file in it. The source slash com dot example dot app slash model info dot java is the path to the model info dot java file. This contains the modules, metadata, dependencies, and exported packages. So yes, the model info file is compiled just like other Java class files. The path to the my app the Java is just like any other path to the Java source file. In this case, it is a Java class located in the com.example.app module. So this is just a, a sample of if you're going to be using terminal to compile a modular jar. Now, of course, you can read more about it, but we're using an IDE, so we often don't have to worry about this. Another concept you might have heard of is an unnamed model. We also have another called automatic model. Let's go through both of them and see the differences. Now, just as we have seen, unnamed models are created by the JPMS when a Java application is run using the class path instead of the module path. Each jar file or directory of class files on the class path becomes an unnamed module at runtime. Unnamed models do not have a name and are not part of the module path. They export all their packages so that other models can access them. They require all other modules, including automatic modules. Don't worry, we will learn about that next. They cannot be used as dependencies, however, in module descriptors, that is in module info.java files of named modules. 
Now, automatic models are a way to add jar files that do not have model info.java file into a modular application. So when a jar file without model info file is placed on the model part, the JPMS automatically creates an automatic model for that jar file. The, the name of the automatic model is derived from the jar file name. Now, automatic models export all the packages so that all other models can access them. They can be used as dependencies of named models, unlike unnamed models that cannot be used as dependencies. Automatic models are created when a jar file without model info is placed on the model path, while unnamed models are created for jar files or directory of class files on the class path. Automatic models have a name derived from their jar file name, but unnamed models do not have a name. Automatic models can be used as dependencies, but unnamed models cannot. So, automatic models allow non-modular libraries to be included in the model path. But unnamed models maintain compatibility with applications that rely on the class path. It is important to keep coming back to this particular lesson to reference and check what the difference between unnamed and automatic models are. So let's continue on with the practical of Java models.